23-year-old Krista Bramlett lived in New Providence, Tennessee in 1996. She lived in a mobile home and was struggling financially. Krista had two very young children who went to live with her mother in Corpus Christi, Texas. Krista stayed behind, hoping to finish her GED program. The area around her became a bad one, experiencing increasing crime rates, including business burglaries and drug-related offenses. Unfortunately, Krista became a victim of the problems facing New Providence. On the afternoon of October 28, 1996, Krista's landlord knocked on the door of her mobile home in Sunnydale Mobile Home Park just off Peachers Mill Road. Nobody answered. The landlord was concerned, so he looked inside. There, he found Krista's body. She had suffered throat injuries. An autopsy confirmed that she had been suffocated. It was also determined that she was indecently assaulted. Investigators collected male DNA from her body. It was sent to the Tennessee Bureau of Investigations lab so that the DNA profile could be created. The DNA profile was submitted into the combined DNA index system, but no matches could be made. Investigators were only able to confirm that the DNA belonged to a black male. Without any other leads in the case, investigators could not identify the culprit and the case went cold. It was only on February 13, 2019, that the Clarksville Police Department Detective Michael O'Reilly got the news he was waiting for. The DNA in the combined DNA index system matched a man who was living in Phoenix, Arizona. The man is 48-year-old Kenneth Hudspeth. Hudspeth had never come up in the investigation up to this point, and he was on nobody's radar. In April of 2019, Detective O'Reilly interviewed Hudspeth and discovered that he was indeed in Clarksville at the time Krista's life was taken. He moved away from the area in December of 1997. Hudspeth admitted that he knew Krista and said he was the last person to see her alive. As a result of the DNA evidence and this interview, Hudspeth was arrested and charged in connection with the case. Investigators also took a look at Hudspeth's arrest record. They could see that he had been arrested several times on charges like domestic assault and felony assault. He has spent time in Arizona and Texas prisons. This brings up the question, why wasn't his DNA collected years ago? In June of 2019, Hudspeth appeared in Montgomery County Court for the first time based on the charges against him. In September of 2021, the case finally went to trial. Half of the three-hour interview Detective Olray had with Hudspeth was shown to the jurors. Hudspeth claims that he was doing drugs back then and can't remember if he assaulted her or took her life but hoped that he did not. It was also released that Husband's DNA was found inside of Krista, on her bra, and on two cigarette butts taken from the scene. On September 24, 2021, after four days of testimony, Kenneth Hudspeth was found guilty of all charges against him. Then, in January of 2022, 51-year-old Hudspeth was sentenced to life in prison, plus 20 years for his crimes. Nine-year-old Darylin Johnson lived in Nampa, Idaho in 1982. At 8 a.m. on February 21st, she was walking six blocks from her home to Lincoln Elementary School. She never made it there. Three days later, her body was found by fishermen in a drainage ditch alongside the Snake River. She had been indecently assaulted and drowned. Male hair and DNA was collected from the crime scene. In March 1983, police questioned Charles Fain. His hair was similar to the samples found on the body. He owned a car, similar to one seen at the crime scene, and he lived a block away from the Johnson family. Fane denied any involvement in the crime. He also passed a polygraph test, but he was charged with the crimes regardless. At Fane's trial, prosecutors also mentioned that a shoe print found near the body could have been Fane's. Two jailhouse informants testified that they heard Fane admit to committing the crime. Both received reduced sentences in exchange for their testimony. Fane claimed that he was hundreds of miles away at the time of the crime, and his testimony was corroborated by other witnesses. The judge did not permit results of the polygraph test as evidence, and the DNA found inside her body could not rule him out as DNA technology was not advanced enough. On November 4, 1983, Fane was convicted, and in March of 1984, he was sentenced to death. For nearly two decades, Fane sat behind bars in isolation for up to 23 hours a day. In 1991, 
He was just four days away from being executed, but it was pushed back. In 1999, when DNA was a little bit more advanced, it was determined that the hairs and DNA found on Darlin's body did not belong to Fane, but an unknown man. He was then exonerated. In August 1999, he was released from the Idaho Maximum Security Institution. In 2019, investigators decided to take another look at the case. In 2020, using genetic genealogy, they determined that 64-year-old David Dalrymple is responsible. The hair and DNA found at the crime scene belong to him. Investigators found that Dalrymple is currently serving a 20-to-life prison sentence for kidnapping and abusing a child in 2004. After some more investigative work and DNA testing, Dalrymple was formally charged with taking Darylin's life in January of 2022. I am happy to report that Charles Fane is doing well now. He received $1.4 million for the wrongful conviction and recently bought a truck. It doesn't make up for losing nearly two decades of your life, but in the end, justice took place as Dalrymple will most likely be given another life sentence, if not the death penalty.